So welcome back to the Joy of Video lessons. This is um, lesson topic 5.2 for calculus. We're talking about the value of Apple stock and we're going to try to figure out some, some couple, several new vocabulary words. Um, the first of which is extrema and then um, also critical points. So let's see what we can do. So the value of stock prices vary from day to day, making investments risky. How can we analyze the value of a stock over time? How could this help us make predictions for what will happen in the future? So the value of Apple stock over a 14-day period can be modeled by A of T, where T represents the days after May 31st in a specific year, probably last year, who knows. And A of T is measured in dollars. The graph of A of T is shown below. Describe what's happening to the graph with the value of the stock over the 14-day period. So as we look at this picture, we would say, well, it starts out high. It goes down to some number, then it turns around and starts rising again. Then it has a decline, fairly not as rapid as the first decline, but pretty rapid. Um, then it seems to kind of hold steady for a little while, about a day. And then it drops again quite drastically and rapidly, but not again as rapidly as the first time. And then it reaches its lowest point, and then it turns around and starts to increase extremely rapidly. And so that's what you'd be talking about, just what's happening. As days pass, the value of the stock was started around $225 decreases to just under two, um, not quite 205. Um, then it increases again to just past 216. Then it decreases and kind of levels off at around just a little under two, probably around 200. And then it decreases again fairly rapidly down to about 185. And then it increases again. So you'd want to write something about that down. The words that I'm saying, that's what should be written. So we have start high, reach a minimum, a sort of minimum before turning around, stuff like that. And so, da, 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 da. so that's it, yeah. Make sure you get as much detail as what in the words I said on your paper as you can. So let's see, that's not my map. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. My picture, I'm keeping the graph in. What's the highest value of the stock during this time period? So it's, the highest is where it starts, which um, I said was around 225. So it's a little higher than that. So starting value. About 225-ish. Amazon dismiss. And the lowest value is here, which is around 185. Okay, really easy to tell that from the picture. Suppose you bought the stock on June 1st. So May 31st and then one day later, right here. That's when you bought the stock. What is the highest value your stock reached during your first week of owning it? So remember, this is two weeks, each one representing a day. So this is day one. So his is his. Since he bought it here, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So from here to there is what we're talking about with question three. Okay. And so as we look at that, we can see the highest value of my stock during my first week is right here around 216, a little more than 216. How does this value compare with my answer to question two? Well, it's lower. And when is it changing the fastest? So now we're talking about the slope. So we talked about how it was decreasing really rapidly in that first day. Something must have happened on May 31st that caused the stock to drop so much in one day. Because in one day it drops from just above 225 to below 207. Um, and so, and then it, that's increasing. So changing the fastest. So it's a very extreme um, let's 
change colors here. It has a very extreme depth. So this is very fast. This is very fast. Let's move back up. This is not as fast, either of these, because they're not as steep. So when we say fastest, we're looking at steepness. And you cannot see that one. Or slope. Okay, so it's changing the fastest on, so this is one, two, day one. Day one is a fast decline. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So I would say on the thirteenth, the fourteenth day. And this is day one, which ends here. Day two, day three, day four, so day 14. So fastest decline or drop, fastest incline or rise. And so I'm looking at the slope of line. And so if I wanted to be really accurate, I would actually do the average rate of change and kind of figure that out. In one day, it goes from 185 to 100, 210. So this one, 210 minus 185 in one day, which is equal to 25. And then the other one, day one, would be down to 206. And starting at about 225, 226. So we're going to go with a negative 20. So with those kinds of estimates, I would say that this one is the, that is when it's changing the fastest, is day 14. So day 14 wins, even though they're both steep lines, day 14 is the steepest. And I didn't put it over one. They should have both been over one. Because, see, kind of silly. For which values is the stock not changing? Well, it's not changing when it flattens or when the tangent line has a slope of zero. So it's not changing when the tangent line has a slope of zero or when it's kind of flat, like right here, this whole little space where it's kind of flat, the slope is zero. So the value of the stock is not changing when the slope is zero. Because that's the rate of change being zero. And so that happens here and here and here at these extreme values, if you will, this low, this high, these peaks and valleys. Not very technical math words, but that's the idea. So those points there, and then this one where it's kind of holding steady for a while. But notice that the slope is kind of zero there. That's why it's holding steady. So, and so what this one is around one, then between three and four, closer to four, so put four, then from eight to nine, and then about twelve and a half, twelve, or thirteen, it's closer to thirteen. If you want to think about the holding steady, maybe as a plateau, if you know what that is. Uh -oh. That word just came into my head just now, so I'll put that out there. So that's basically what's happening now. Let's talk about the calculus here, because we really didn't do any. We talked about the average rate of change in a couple of places to decide what was the steepest.
the largest growth relative to the average rate of change. Um, these three, this one, this one, and this one, are what we consider extreme values or extrema. We've been talking about extrema since math one and possibly even in middle school. I'm not sure what words they use. We talk about the mims, maxes, and mins. So the maximum and the minimum. And by saying extrema, we can say the extrema are. And we would say this one is a min and this one is a max. And this one is a min. And this is kind of an extreme, but not really because it's kind of flat name rather than turning around, like changing its trajectory, if you will. So extrema, that's really important word. We use it all the time. Okay, are there any questions? So we're on the back here, let's take a look at before we get at this one. So we've got our EVT, extrema, and critical points. So we'll go ahead and jump over to this right here. So EVT, extrema, and critical points. Let's make that. There. So anyway, the extreme value theorem. If a function f of x is continuous on a, from a to b on a closed interval is what that's called, then f of x must attain a maximum and a minimum on that closed interval. So if the function is continuous, there must be a largest and there must be a smallest. If it's not continuous, that's not necessarily true. But if it is continuous, there must be a maximum and there must be a minimum. Okay. The extreme value theorem is really critical. We talk about it a lot. It's also really easy. It's kind of one of those we don't really use very often in words because we just go, oh, it's continuous, therefore there has to be a max and a min. And then there's some words here. An absolute max, absolute, or the, the, the max. So we'll go back and look at that picture in a minute with these words. At x equals c, if x of f of c is greater than or equal to all f of x for all x, so it's big, the biggest thing on the function, has a relative max if it's bigger than everything around it for, or near c, has an absolute min if it's the smallest for all x, okay, and a relative min if it's the smallest for everything around it, okay. So we'll get back to those words in just a second. Critical points are points where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. So critical points where the derivative or the slope, let's put that word in here, slope rate of change is zero or undefined. Okay, and that's not what I wanted to do. Now let's go back and look at the graph for just a minute with the words relative and absolute in mind. Okay, so looking at our graph, this is what we would call a relative minimum. It is not the smallest value, that's over here. But compared to everything around it, it's small. It is a minimum on this graph because it, the values decrease until they get there and then after they get there, they increase. So this is what we'd call a relative minimum. This is also a relative maximum because it's larger than everything around it. It's not the maximum, that's over here. So the relative min, the relative max. This is neither a min or a max, even though it's flat and interesting. So it is still a critical point because it's flat and interesting, but it is not a maximum or minimum, okay? This is a relative minimum because it's smaller than everything around it. It is also the absolute minimum because it's smaller than every point on the graph that is the least value of this stock. So it is the, the absolute minimum. We always need to look at the endpoints. This endpoint, because your absolutes can be at the endpoint. So while this is the largest in the flow of the graph, this is bigger, so therefore this is the absolute maximum. And we will talk about that more as we go, actually, in class on Thursday. Okay. Are there any questions about those kinds of ideas? So those are the words. 
And that's what we're dealing with. And in the next video, we'll do the checking for understanding. We'll see you soon.